downward flows. Sex, the seed of love. Sex is the seed of love. Love becomes the seed for compassion. And out of compassion, liberation happens as awakening or enlightenment. All are part of life energy or consciousness. Growth of consciousness depends on how well you have how well you have understood the potentiality hidden in the seed, on the opportunity to allow the seed to grow, and the freedom from egocentric identities. When consciousness reaches its crescendo and is without center, then it becomes awakening. The center of consciousness keeps on changing at physical plane, the center is the other. At emotional plane, the center shifts to oneself. And finally, when the entire cosmos becomes the center, know this state as awakening. Enlightenment happens. One is liberated from the suffering, bondage and ignorance. At the level of enlightenment, the, there is no center anywhere, just the existence. Freedom is difficult to come through control. The more you control yourself, the more you can control your instincts, the more you can control your body, and the more you can control your mind, then the more you feel powerful. You become a master inside. But this is through conflict. This is through struggle and violence. And it always happens more or less that a person who has been practicing yoga for many lives comes to a point where the whole journey becomes a drab, dairy and futile. Because the more ego is fulfilled, the more you feel it is useless. Then the follower of the path of yoga turns to Tantra. At one point or the other, everyone turns to Tantra. But yoga appeals because everyone is an egoistic. Tantra never appeals in the beginning. Tantra can appeal only in the higher depths to those who have worked on themselves, who have really been struggling through yoga for many lives, then Tantra appeals to them because they can understand. Ordinarily, you will not be attracted by Tantra. And if you are attracted, you will be attracted for wrong reasons. So try to understand them also. You will not be attracted to Tantra in the first place because it asks you to surrender, not to fight. It asks you to float, not to swim. It asks you to move with the current, not to go upstream. It tells you nature is good. Trust nature. Do not fight it. Even sex is good. Trust it follows. Trust it. Follow it, flow into it, do not fight it. No fight is the central teaching of Tantra. Flow, let go. It cannot appeal. There is no fulfillment of your ego through it. In the first step, it asks for your ego to be dissolved. In the very beginning, it asks you to dissolve it. Yoga also asks, but only at the end. First, it will ask you to purify it. And if it is purified completely, it dissolves. It cannot remain, but that is the last in yoga. And in Tantra, this is the first. So Tantra will not appeal generally. And if it does appeal, it will appeal for wrong reasons. For example, if you want to indulge in sex, then you can rationalize your indulgence through Tantra. That can become the appeal. 
If you want to indulge in wine, in women, in other things, you can feel attracted towards Tantra, but really you are not attracted to Tantra. Tantra is a facet, a trick. You are attracted to something else which you think Tantra allows you. So Tantra always appeals for wrong reasons. However, Tantra is not to help your indulgence. It is to transform it. So do not deceive yourself. Through Tantra, you can deceive yourself very easily. And because of this possibility of deception, Mahabir could not describe Tantra. This possibility is always there. And man is so deceptive that he can show one thing when he really means another. He can rationalize. However, Tantra is not to help your indulgence. It is to transform it. So do not deceive yourself through Tantra. For example, in old China, there was something like Tantra, a secret science. It is known as Tao. Tao has similar trends to Tantra. For example, Tao says it is good if you want to be freed of sex, that you should not stick to one person, to one woman or one man. You should not stick to one person if you want to be freed. Tao says, that it is better to go on changing partners. This is absolutely right, but you can rationalize it. You can deceive yourself. You may just be a sex maniac and you can think that I am doing Tantra practice. So I cannot stick to one woman or one man. I have to change and many emperors in China practiced it. They had big um, harem only for this purpose. But Tao is meaningful if you look deep down into human psychology. If you know only one woman, sooner or later your attraction for that person will wither away. But your attraction for woman or man will remain. You will be attracted by the other sex. This woman, your wife, your husband, will really not be of the opposite sex. She will not, she or he will not attract you. She will not be the magnet for you. You will have become accustomed to her. Tao says that if a man moves amidst women, he will not only go beyond one, he will go beyond many, beyond the opposite sex. The very knowledge of many men or women will help him to transcend and this is right but dangerous because you will like it not because it is right but because it gives you the license. That is the problem with Tantra and which is very common. So in China also, that knowledge was suppressed. It had to be suppressed. In India, Tantra was also suppressed because it said many dangerous things only because you are deceptive. Otherwise, they are wonderful. Nothing has happened to the human mind that is more wonderful and mysterious than Tantra. No knowledge is so deep, but knowledge always has its dangers. For example, now science has become a danger because it has come to know many deep secrets. Now it knows how to create atomic energy. Einstein is reported to have said if he had, he is again given a life, rather than being a scientist, he would like to be a plumber. Because as he looks back, 
his whole life has been futile not only futile but dangerous to humanity and he has given one of the deepest secrets but to a mankind which is self deceptive i wonder the day may come soon when we will have to suppress scientific knowledge there are rumors that there are secret thoughts amid scientists about whether to disclose more or not whether they should stop the search or whether they should go further because now it is a dangerous ground my interest in sex is for different reasons you look at it the sex is the gateway to reach to the inner core human body is the temple to reach the temple you have to pass through the entrance to the temple sex is the entrance to the temple although the genitals or the instruments for the performance of sex act but its theme the goal what one needs to achieve through it is the harmony just as atom was divided into three neutron proton and electron one is positively charged the other is negatively charged and electron is the energy field that moves around in an elliptical path in the same way the atma or the soul was divided into two shiva and shakti the energy energy and the field of the energy to operate you have the energy but this energy that you have within cannot work without the energy field so with the interaction of the two you attain to a certain level of energy which helps you to propel your energy so the purpose is that just as you enter the house your house which is your body or the temple you pass through the entrance you have a certain discipline when you are passing through the entrance then there are various realms your bedroom your living room your kitchen your rest room you visit everywhere but you do not stay there for certain purposes you go there but your ultimate goal and where you feel most relaxed is the inner space which is your bedroom so in a temple that space is an empty space this i will continue to explore in the next few sessions enough for now